everybody, welcome back to episode 9 of Marketing Humanity. I am your host, Gisela, and Peter is, as always, here with me today. I'm always here. <laughs> Hi. So today's topic is, how can marketing turn the next recession into an opportunity? Mm. So there seems to be a lot of chatter about a recession that is getting everyone a little jittery. And I have to admit that I'm a little nervous too because I have never experienced a recession in my working life before. Um, But Peter, who has an economics background, um, tells me not to worry at all. (laughs) So (laughs) with with your economics background, what are your thoughts? Are you worried at all? well, first of all, I'm never. Did I say don't worry at all? Uh, here's here's kind of my thoughts on recession. I I so a little bit of background. Yes, I did study economics, but more so than that, I actually started my career in like Wall Street West, right down here in the financial district in San Francisco, working for large financial institutions, managing a ton of money uh, for clients. So I've seen a f- handful of recessions in my time. Um, multiple at least I think it's like three or four recessions so the way I kind of see it is that recessions are certainly times where businesses feel challenged Mm -hmm. because consumers feel nervous and that trickles down to other parts of the economy but the nature of recession in a free market economy like ours uh, is that I see it as a way to purge excess uh, mm-hmm. to purge out you know froth in, in the market for example during the early dot-com days yeah. uh, valuations were just completely speculative it, mm-hmm. it became like well, a Vegas uh, type of casino wow. playing where people were just buying because their neighbors were talking about it uh, but the multiples uh, were just outrageous mm-hmm. these companies weren't even making money yet but they were being valued more than some of these blue chip companies like General Electric at the time so that's when equilibrium goes out of whack and I think we experience that sometimes in the real estate market as well mm-hmm. when when the market becomes too hot uh, there requires some type of correction mm-hmm. so so it is so it's all about perspective and if you look at if I can help calm your you a little <laughs> bit if you look at uh, some of the economic forecasts because yeah. these are all drummed up by the media yeah. if you go to the Bloomberg they actually have what they call the Bloomberg recession tracker oh, okay. uh, go Google it online <laughs> what you'll find is that their latest economists are predicting a 26% chance of a recession in the United States uh, in the next coming year. That's so really low. That's actually much lower than you would think yeah. given the difference between what the media and, and all that is kind of drumming up. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you see recessions as being cyclical, as being good for the economy, yeah. if you pull back 30,000 feet and look at a chart of the let's say the some type of index, you know, the, the uh, S&P 500 index, for example, you'll see that it has a steady rise. But if you take a closer look at a certain period, you'll see that there are, are minor dips in mm-hmm. time. But every time a recession happens and the necessary corrections are made, right. the marketplace uh, makes its adjustment You know, in, uh, in the macro terms and the market actually goes back up higher than its last high again. So that if you see it that way, then you know it's temporary, you know it's cyclical, yeah. and uh, most recessions last about maybe anywhere from eight months to a year, and then you'll have another growth phase for several years after yeah. that. So for businesses, the key here is planning and perspective. So with that type of mindset um, and preparation, um, I think businesses can overcome these challenges. Let's pivot a little bit and talk about marketing specifically. So I know that you were running your own agency uh, during a recession. Yeah. And my gut instinct tells me that companies actually, when they don't have extra change, they will cut the marketing <laughs> budget. What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I can see why some companies would do that as a knee-jerk reaction. Yeah. Uh, when I was uh, running the agency during the recession, I think it was uh, uh, after post 9-11. Mm. So that's when consumer confidence, obviously the whole world was really concerned about what happened then right. and the ripple effects it has globally. And so there's definitely a slowdown that occurred right after it. Yeah. So what happened was our clients at that time were all Fortune 100 companies. Okay. And so these are smart people running these marketing departments uh, and, and figuring out what to do in a period like this. Yeah. So what they decided to do is actually counter, somewhat counterintuitive. 
uh, but actually it's the right thing to do. They, did, they actually did not cut marketing. They actually kept it steady. Um, and, and I think the reason why, I don't think it, I, I know the reason why is because they believe that during these times when peop, other, their competitors are spending less, perhaps cutting back even, uh, it's their opportunity to grow stronger, either capture more attention, uh, uh, you know, build stronger relationships with existing and new customers. And so they see it as an opportunity to secure or grow their market position and emerge stronger uh, when when the market recovers and yeah. the economy grows. Hmm. I love to hear more about these strategies that these companies use to kind of recession proof their businesses. Sure. But first, why don't we take a quick break? And for listeners who have tuned into our previous couple of episodes, uh, you'll be familiar with our new Ad Olympics segment. It's where Peter and I will watch an ad, talk a little bit about it, and then give it a score from one to five. One being Hmm, we didn't really like it. To five, oh my God, we loved it. And today's ad that we chose, Peter actually chose it. I chose it, yes. So to set it up a little bit, it's from Principal Financial. Uh, it, they are an insurance company, and the name of the spot is called Dream Car. So let me let's check this it up. out. Let's check it out. And before we start, just to let you guys know for our audio listeners again, yes. that the actual ad, link to the actual ad will actually be in our show notes. Yes. So please make sure you tune in there if you're curious, but mm -hmm. here's, here it is. I think I found my dream car. It turns out they want me to start next month. She can stay with you to finish your senior year. Of course she can. <laughs> Hey, wanna drive? Really? Do you think we can do this, Rob? Things will be tight, but we can make this work. That's great. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> now. <laughs> Wait, Grandpa. What about your dream car? This is my dream now. <laughs> <laughs> Principal, we can help you plan for that. Okay, tissue please. <laughs> that was really cute. <laughs> but when I watched it, I had no idea what company this was. Yeah. Um, had no idea what they were trying to sell, but I was captured by the real people, the real relationship, the really authentic type of storytelling. And it really pulls at your heartstrings and it kept me fixated on it for the whole time. And then at the end I was like, oh, okay, it's by um, Principal Financial. Now I associate them with kind of goodwill and positive emotions. I think it was a really well done ad. You know, a lot of times we talk about advertising, you know, being so literal. Yeah. Uh, and, and literal advertising is actually something we don't advocate for the most part because marketing works when you tug at the emotional side of people, yeah. right? Uh, logic only does so much. But studies have shown that people actually make decisions based on emotion. And I think this ad was brilliant in the fact that it told a uh, a story almost like a classic Hollywood movie. Mm -hmm. It has its initial tension. There was a problem to be solved. There's the protagonist, which is being the grandfather, yeah. the, the younger uh, granddaughter. Of course, there's a generation gap there. Mm -hmm. She didn't say, OK, Boomer, which was good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, you know, he wanted to buy his dream car. Yes. But now their life is now upended because now they have a young teenager mm -hmm. uh, living with them now. So what happens? Uh, so you're, you're kept at the almost in the dark in terms of this what's going to happen what's right. the unexpected twist and at the very end the twist was just executed in such a nice heartfelt mm -hmm. way um, it didn't feel weird it didn't feel fake it, it, it felt like a, a you know you paid a ticket to watch something like this and you yeah. left feeling really good when yes. you watch a good movie and i think this ad did that very well and i think that it's it's a reflective of all good ads actually it le makes you feeling 
positive. It makes you feel that this company really understands what their product is really doing, mm -hmm. and it's not just pushing pushing stuff in your face, yes. literally uh, yeah. using price, using discounts. Uh, it's tugging at what really matters uh, in humanity. And, and of course, they're talking about retirement planning and planning for your future. Uh, so I thought this was a, a, a great masterclass example of how to tell a great story in a very, very short period of time. I definitely agree. Yeah. Let's give it a score. Okay. And we're doing decimals now. No, I can do decimals. <laughs> you can do hundreds of the decimals. Um, okay, here we go. One, two, two three. three. 4.75. 4.75, yes. Pretty Minus close. 4.5, yeah. So why'd you give it the score you did? Well, I did really enjoy it. And I just you see, I just can't give, my, give it a five because you don't know what <laughs> a five is. Because you're Gisela. Exactly. <laughs> so this is a high, this is high praise. <laughs> this is high praise. Well, yes. I, I think it's high praise. I think it's well deserving. Uh, it, you know, it's all subjective ads, of course, but I do think universally it tells a really good story. It does. Uh, it just executes it really well. And I, I personally prefer ads that just are not so like uh, in Sally, your face, yeah. so salesy. Mm -hmm. um, there's a time for that, but there's also a time to just let people uh, get to know you for what right. you represent yeah, as definitely. a brand. So great. Cool. So let's go back to our episode. We were before our break. We were talking about how marketing can turn the next recession into an opportunity. So going into our second half, Peter, why don't you give us some marketing strategies that brands can actually use to recession-proof their businesses? Yeah, um, I, I talked about it a little bit earlier. Yeah. It all starts with proper recession-proofing or recession planning mm -hmm. but it's also having a marketing team that um is prepared for for s scenarios kind of like this especially if there's enough chatter about it mm -hmm. that you you know these things happen if you turn on you know uh the financial channels uh you can kind of pick up on it and so if that's what people are talking about then prepare for it. it's like a rainy day thing mm -hmm. yeah. earthquake preparedness we live in california so it's kind of like that but here are our few tangible tips uh, that we can do. Number one, we talked about it, it's planning. So just because today is going, all things are going well, but when things go well, you can freely spend marketing mm -hmm. like crazy if you want, because every dollar hopefully can, can bring in $2 worth of profits. But when that turns, how are you gonna do your revenue planning? Work with yeah. your financial people, work with your you know CEOs and C CFOs on making sure that marketing dollars are secure, uh, marketing uh, dollars are still there despite uh, the challenging economic situation that may happen. So that's number one, proper planning. Number two is, um, don't cut marketing spending significantly because studies have shown, like the examples I gave previously, is that companies who actually maintain or even grow their spending during yeah. this time can actually benefit a lot because mm -hmm. during recessions, rates for advertising actually go down. Oh, Supply okay. and demand issues. Yes. So what you're buying is relatively at a discount now. <laughs> so you can buy more of that or buy more with the same uh, amount of budget that you right, have, right? right? That can translate to uh, stronger ROI, that can translate to uh, more opportunities mm -hmm. uh, for you. Um, but if you have to cut, and this is another tip, now if you have to cut your marketing budget, uh, just be think about shifting your marketing dollars mm -hmm. towards different types of marketing tactics. You know, one of the things we talk about is looking at ways to reinvest into your best customers using direct response type of uh, mm. tactics to reach existing customers. We always say that uh, it costs a lot more to acquire a new customer than it is to get existing yes. customers to do business with you. So this is the time to look at where are the lowest line uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I think existing customers are great. Build, reinforce those relationships yeah. and, and do things like that. Now, one more thing is um, a little bit not quite marketing, mm -hmm. but I think it's it's all related uh, to the brand that you're trying to build is culture. We, a lot of times people use brand and culture synonymously. And I think what I'm trying to say here is 
during times uh, economic downturns, maybe there's more free time because business has slowed down a little bit. Great opportunity to invest in your people, in your reinforcing your culture, because people is a prime channel where customers interface with you, whether it's customer service, whether it's your sales staff, uh, whether it's even operations. Mm -hmm. Uh, Invest in your culture so that it is strong Mm -hmm. and reinforce to your employees that this is the time where we band together and we support each other through this. And finally, reevaluate everything. Uh, this is a good time because again, when, when times are good, um, you know, expenses and things can go up and then it really doesn't really matter. Yeah. But now that things uh, have slowed down a bit for companies, it's a good time to reevaluate things right. uh, to make sure your expenses are in check, your mm-hmm. partnerships are strong, uh, look at new agencies perhaps even, um, <laughs> and, um, and, and use it as a way to emerge from this so all these tips really are setting up that making sure that you merge from these economic slowdowns mm-hmm. stronger. Right. And to add to that, I think that a gut response for many companies might be to immediately slash your product's pricing, but that will just kind of cheapen your image and compromise your brand positioning for some short-term rewards. Yeah, I think if you want to do sales now, if sales is part of what you do anyway, if you're in fashion or retail or, um, you know, sales are a normal course of business. But what we're saying is don't overly deviate from what you normally do. Now, if you don't discount at all and all of a sudden you you slash prices by 70 percent, then people will come to expect that post-recession yes. it's like hey you had a steep <laughs> sale before what, what happened yeah. to that then you build this awkward expectation set mm-hmm. of people uh so just be careful not to dilute or even you know you call it cheapen your brand right. so uh because you build that brand through hard work and equity mm-hmm. and that's something that should protect you during times like this yeah. so don't have knee-jerk reactions make sure there's proper planning so that's a great point uh, make sure you protect your brand and maybe even make it stronger during times like this right so it sounds like not only should we not worry about the recession, upcoming <laughs> potential recession, but it seems like it's just a lot of opportunities for companies, in fact. I think it's all f- how you frame your perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are there are tough pills to swallow, for sure. No one's trying to sugarcoat the, re- the fact that recessions will all go through some pain. Mm-hmm. But if uh, sometimes challenges makes us stronger, right? You fall yeah. down, pick yourself up, you learn the lessons from it. And I think businesses have an opportunity, uh, if well planned, to, to come out of this uh, better for it. Yeah, you previously mentioned um, companies having a little extra downtime. Yeah. I think a good thing to do during this downtime would be to outreach to your existing customers, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, we talked about existing customers being more, not valuable, but you know, yeah. it's, it's less expensive to take care of your, your existing customers. Um, I really am a firm believer in taking care of your customers, especially your, your biggest fans. Right. Uh, so uh, given our digital world, we're all doing FaceTime conference calls, everything yeah. is a button push away. Mm-hmm. That's all fine and good during the normal course of business. But mm-hmm. imagine a scenario where we actually do, you know, what this podcast is named after. It's called Marketing Humanity. Mm-hmm. Imagine during times like this, an executive, um, a CMO, a senior vice president of marketing, uh, or even an agency executive flies out and meet with their clients Ooh. and face to face, flies out there and it's not just about talking up sales, but you're actually on a listening tour to say, hey, how's your business doing? Mm -hmm. How are your customers doing? What can we do to help? Mm -hmm. You know, is there ways we can work with each other so that, um, you know, we're we're both better off for it. Yeah. Uh, That type of personal touch, that types of human to human relationship, um, I feel like we're missing that art it's almost like handwriting thank you notes to people yeah. but when you do get one you feel so good about it right. and i think these are times you know this is just one example and you can do many many examples like this but flying out or getting in your car and you know driving 40 minutes to meet with with some of your best customers and listen to them and reinforce that relationship i think it's a magical thing and and it could be amazing for your business if you put that into practice yeah if a company reached out to me personally i feel like i would be a customer for, for life. life yeah you exactly would. yeah yeah so those are really good tips and tricks and i think to summarize if a recession does happen it's a really good opportunity to invest in both your customers and your employees yes awesome 
So that's it for today's show. Thank you, Sparko, for sponsoring the podcast. You can check them out at sparko.com. The link is um, in our show notes. And if you have any other questions, worries, concerns about the recession, please leave us a comment because we will give you um, some good tips, good ideas. For sure. We'll read all the comments. Yeah, exactly. And next week, we will be talking about AI and the marketing industry. There's a lot of chatter about how AI might potentially replace the marketing industry, wow. but we don't know if we agree with that. Ah, <laughs> that's going to be a fun one. I'm it ready for is. it. <laughs> so we'll catch you next time. Thank you. Thank you.